Hey everyone, welcome back! Today we're looking at even more Incarnon shenanigans. Yes, that's a Molecular Prime Nova nuking on Steel Path. It takes a little bit for Molecular to ripple across the crowd, but as you can see, we're spreading hundreds of thousands of damage. Today, I'm showing how to use Nova's Incarnon Molecular Nuke. Molecular Prime is a weird, buggy ability. It expands based on duration, the explosion radius of killed enemy scales by range, and damage to others depends on strength. All enemies tanked also have a 2 times damage debuff to make them easier to kill. Oh, and the slow. The slow is handy because Molecular Prime's damage is irrelevant on Steel Path without armor strip. The damage just isn't high enough. Easy options like Terrify can make them run off, whereas Molecular Prime is both your damage debuff, explosion nuke, and also built-in creeping terrifying. But there is one other curious effect we discovered a week ago. Thanks to Ukami Miao for pointing this out and piquing our interest. It turns out that Molecular Prime inherits the unique traits of whatever tool was used to start the kill cascade. If you kill the enemy with a melee, it's considered melee damage, but not in the traditional pseudo-exalt way. It ignores typical mod scaling, but will activate any type of conditional mod that would require said weapon type. What does this mean? Killing with a dagger makes Molecular Prime inherit dagger as its damage type. Amalgam Arganach Metal Augur strips armor off enemies that any kind of dagger damage at all, be it from statuses or raw damage. This is why Zephyr's Tornadoes work well with Amalgam Arganach, because the Tornadoes also inherit weapon damage types. Tornadoes is considered dagger damage if you swing into it with a dagger, allowing you to strip armor off much more quickly with all of the extra tornado hits. The same holds true for Molecular Prime. Every explosion caused by initial dagger kill will be considered dagger AoE and thus strip armor off. Can be handy for endurance, but honestly, I still don't have a use for the dagger Nova strat. On the other hand, it also inherits Incarnon perks. Most notably, this includes Devouring Attrition, and similar Incarnon perks from the other guns that multiply non-crits by plus 2000% damage scaling half the time. Yes, the Molecular Prime I'm showcasing is doing 21 times more damage than normal. Since this is multiplicative to strength scaling, you can push Molecular Prime up to absurd damage levels. Nuking Steel Path and let us focus on maximizing the AoE stat of Molecular by building into more range. Although not listed on the wiki, we tested and confirmed that Molecular Prime explosions appear to have 60% falloff at their edge. This is important because that's actually not a big loss. In comparison, popular AoE weapons such as Brahma or Zar lose 80-90% to at their edge. While Molecular Prime tanks through walls, the explosions also going through walls and Terrify also stripping through walls, I chose to settle on Pillage. Why? We still had stragglers running off on the Terrify setup, especially because that build was a rather glass cannon. It was a shield gating, so we built high range, meaning Null Stars will not give us consistent damage reduction, since they keep flying off to detonate on enemies nearby. So Terrify was our survivability tool for shield gating, but casting Terrify to survive, if Molecular Prime isn't up, causes enemies to sprint away, negatively affecting our KPM. Also, that requires a decay dragon key, and I know a lot of you dislike that. Instead, Pillage gives us ridiculous overshields, doesn't need a decay key, and can strip both armor and shields. This means unlike Terrify, Pillage Nova can actually strip even Acolytes, allowing your Incarnon weapons to shred them even easier. Of course, if you really want to, you can always drop a different ability instead of Null Stars, and run Molecular Fission. That way all the detonations will restore your stars that keep flying off everywhere, but it's still finicky. Also, it's much easier to source strength now and Corrosive Projection cuts the full strip requirement of Pillage down to just 328. Since strength buffs both Molecular Prime Detonation and our strip, it works out perfectly. Let's take a closer look. As I said, this build doesn't rely on a Decay Dragon Key, but it is still a shield gating build. We need to spam Pillage every 6-8 to eight seconds anyways, so that Molecular Prime can scale its damage without armor. Multiple detonations can kill anything caught in between, but if you can't start the chain reaction, it's a moot point. That 200-500k AoE comes down to just 20-50k at best on most Steel Path enemies. Certain tankier units just won't die to this. On the bright side, it appears to chunk over to guard quite well. Our energy economy is maintained by Equilibrium, Prime Flow, and Energize. We don't really have spare slots for efficiency in casting Molecular Prime every 10-15 seconds, and Pillage every 6-8 seconds can get quite expensive. Prime Flow gives us leeway for when our companion downs, which deactivates Synth Fiber temporarily and stops us from picking up health orbs when we're at full HP. 
Range comes from an auger at plus stretch, granting Molecular Prime a 17.5 meter detonation radius per enemy. Easy overlap for scaling damage. While Pillage has an initial cast radius of 14 meters and expands all the way to 65, you probably don't need all that range, so if you need shields back sooner, uncasting will immediately drag Pillage back to you. 328 strength is needed to full strip with CP, and I'm running Molt Augmented alongside Matarai's Sling Strength plus 40% for plus 100% strength overall. This also grants me plus 50% casting speed from Power Transfer, since casting Molecular Prime is slow. This is also important because the initial chain reaction requires enough enemies to die and enable a cascade. Megas normally helps with this if enemies are too loose in an area, so Operator gives us a loose grouping, more strength, and casting speed. For Archon Shards today, you need at least plus 29% strength from Shards. This means you either need 3 Ordinary Red Shards or 2 Tau Forged. I also had 2 Casting Speed Shards from an earlier build, but these are not required so long as you're on Matarai for Power Transfer. Without Matarai, you'll need these Casting Speed Shards and also replace Transient Fortitude with Blind Rage. But this also means you can replace Prime Continuity for Streamline. This non-Matarai version can run a Decay Dragon Key and 3 Augur mods including your pistol, fully resetting shield gates on even initial pillage cast 75 shields and letting you double shield gate as it returns. For our Fenmore, it's a basic raw damage build. We don't build crits because we're using Devouring Attrition for 21 times more damage. This means 3 slots for elementals. As Fenmore is so overpowering, it's up to you if you want to leave it on Corrosive Heat or swap Stormbringer out for Viral Heat and get that spicy flesh type bonus. The damage loss is noticeable on Corrosive, but at base deal path they will still die instantly regardless. Molecular Prime only inherits Fenmore's 21 times damage in Karnam Perk and your Bane, so make sure to include the Primed Bane here for 1.55 times more damage. The final result is Molecular Prime Detonation doing 32.55 times more damage. That's how we get to hundreds of thousands. Prime Shred lets you build headshots easier for Incarnon in a crowd or to easily trigger detonations even if Incarnon form isn't yet active. Aptitude for base damage, multi-shot, and that's it. There really isn't much else you can slot on for raw damage Fenmore. Merciless since killing stuff is so easy, deadhead if you actually want to aim at heads, and Fenmore can kill acolytes. But if you're worried about preserving Incarnon mode ammo and not having to recharge it, we can also bring along a Glaive Prime. For a full breakdown on Fenmore, check out my video at the top right. But first, our pistol. Stat Stick Pistol, where none of the mods matter except carrying two augers for shield gating. But it's also optional, since our main gate tool is Pillage. Glaive Prime is Stock Build, a generic 2 times heavy throw pure damage due to Force Proc Slash. The only time I throw this is to kill problematic acolytes where Fenmore isn't optimal as it wastes our Incarnon ammo, or I don't have an Incarnon form active. Make sure you have Amalgam Orchid Shatter and Killing Blow for better windup. And the rest is fine. Bane optional since the main reason is for Acolytes and not Exmire heavy units. Acolytes don't have a faction. Panzer is the same build as always, with the import bits being synth set so that we can continue to pick up health orbs even when we're at full HP for Equilibrium. Martyr to keep us alive, Devolution to keep Panzer alive, Radar, and Vacuum. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible, like I've done with Citrine's Last Wish. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis, as well as the earliest Duviri content. If you want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.